NASA has awarded Elon Musk's SpaceX another contract, this time to help launch its Europa Clipper spacecraft towards Europa, an icy moon that orbits Jupiter and is a leading contender for finding extraterrestrial life inside our solar system. Here's what you need to know. In October of 2024, NASA will use SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket to launch its Europa Clipper spacecraft from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. It says the contract award amount for launch services is around $178 million. According to Space.com, the announcement marks an end to lengthy delays around the project, which was initially planning to rely on NASA's own space launch system for its launch. The development of that system has been haunted by delays and cost overruns. With its launch window finally confirmed, Europa Clipper is now set to conduct a detailed survey of Europa and investigate whether the icy moon has conditions suitable for life. NASA says its key mission objectives are to produce high-resolution images of Europa's surface, determine its composition, and look for signs of recent or ongoing geological activity. It will also measure the thickness of Europa's icy shell, search for subsurface lakes, and determine the depth and salinity of Europa's ocean. Europa has already been the subject of much previous study, with scientists last year demonstrating that the relentless barrage of radiation Europa receives from Jupiter makes the moon glow in the dark. Much of the most interesting study around Europa, however, revolves around the possibility that it could harbor life. Scientists are particularly interested in the ocean below its icy surface because similar to Enceladus, another icy moon that orbits Saturn, the subsurface ocean appears to be in contact with the moon's rocky core. According to Space.com, this contact makes a range of complex chemical reactions possible, and these reactions could theoretically have led to life. While NASA is always relatively circumspect about such possibilities, one expert last year was notably less so. Speaking at Liverpool Hope University, Professor of Planetary and Space Science Monica Grady said it was almost a racing certainty that there is life beneath the ice on Europa, according to Fizz.org. Grady went as far as saying that the chances of finding larger life forms on Europa are higher than on Mars. If there is something on Mars, it's likely to be very small, bacteria, she explained. But I think we've got a better chance of having slightly higher forms of life on Europa, perhaps similar to the intelligence of an octopus. According to Fizz.org, the reason for this optimism is that Europa's 15-mile-deep ice could act as a protective barrier against both solar radiation and asteroid impacts, allowing for the possibility of life developing in the water that is likely to be beneath ice. Hydrothermal vents on the ocean floor and sodium chloride in Europa's salty water could also be potentially useful factors. Here's how Europa's fellow life-hosting contender Enceladus shapes up in comparison. Scientists have found evidence that increases the chances of alien life being found on Saturn's sixth largest moon, an icy ball called Enceladus. NASA scientists used data from the Cassini space probe to see what new information they could find about Enceladus. They went digging through detailed infrared images and say they've now found strong evidence of areas of fresh ice in the moon's northern hemisphere. Fresh ice drastically increases the odds of finding alien life on any planet. This fresh ice is thought to have originated in the moon's interior, and scientists think there must be some kind of mechanism by which the fresh ice could have emerged to cover patches of the moon's ancient ice surface. Some theorize that these fresh ice patches in the north formed in much the same way as similar patches formed in the south by being blown through a series of giant cracks in the moon's surface. These giant cracks in the south look like tiger stripes. Their data were studied a few years ago. According to the researchers, the tiger stripes are about 130 kilometers long, with fracture lines running parallel to one another, spaced at 35 kilometers apart. Lead author Doug Hemingway at the Carnegie Institute for Science says that the fissures constantly blow out water and ice, unlike any other formation known to exist on icy moons. According to the research team, the tiger stripes and the formation's strange behavior is caused by the moon's eccentric orbit around Saturn. Because Enceladus' distance to Saturn fluctuates, planetary gravity stretches and flexes the moon. This effect generates the heat that keeps Enceladus from freezing solid. The gravitational force is so powerful that it changes the shape of the moon, with the resulting stress creating the first tiger stripe on Enceladus. As the moon's surface ocean erupts through the fissure, the jets of water then freeze and fall back on the moon. The weight of the accumulated ice and snow puts pressure on the nearby ice sheet and breaks the crust on parallel lines. Those fractures become the moon's stripes. Some scientists theorize that the areas of fresh ice in the northern hemisphere were formed in a similar way as the southern fresh ice areas around the tiger stripes. 
However, that theory would be hard to prove, as the Cassini space probe that recorded the data stopped functioning in 2017. There has been a lot of talk about UFOs being treated as a reality lately. Congress even ordered a special Pentagon team to deliver an unclassified report on UFOs before the end of June. A classified version of this report was provided to lawmakers earlier this month, and the BBC says that unnamed officials told US media that the report found no evidence of alien activity, but also did not rule it out. This did not stop the controversial writer Professor Avi Loeb from publishing his opinion in The Scientific American saying that the soon-to-be-revealed UFO report shows that people should buy his new book about Oumuamua being an alien spacecraft. Here are the details. Professor Avi Loeb published his opinion about the Pentagon's soon-to-be-released UFO report on the Scientific American website on Tuesday, June 22nd. He made use of the opportunity to say that the new focus on unidentified aerial phenomena shows that there is growing evidence that alien spacecraft could exist and that his book about it should be taken more seriously. Professor Avi Loeb published an article on the Scientific American website on June 22nd saying the Pentagon's recent UFO report shows his theory should be taken more seriously. His theory is that the interstellar object dubbed Oumuamua that passed near the sun recently is actually an alien probe. He based his theory on the fact that grainy images of the object suggest it is a flat object that seems to tumble once every eight hours. It also seemed to accelerate as if it was pushed away from the sun like a light sail. He also claimed that for Oumuamua to be a random natural object, the number of objects like it would have to be many times more than previously calculated by himself. Critics of Loeb's theory says the interstellar object is most likely a shard of rock or a loose cloud of dust grains, and its acceleration in the outer solar system was caused by bursts of evaporating ice. And regarding the UFO report that has to be presented to Congress before the end of this month, although no earth-shattering revelations were expected, the existence of a government report on a much ridiculed issue shows how UFOs have beamed out of the realm of purely science fiction pop culture and into the world of U.S. national security. Scientists have found two exoplanets orbiting a red dwarf around 120 light-years from Earth, including a super-Earth. The research, published in Astronomy and Astrophysics, notes that exoplanets TOI-1266b and TOI-1266c are so close to their star that it takes them just 11 days and 19 days to orbit it. The inner planet TOI-1266b is considered a sub-Neptune as it measures around two and a half times the Earth's diameter. The outer planet TOI-1266c is just over one and a half times the size of our planet, landing it in the super-Earth category. Both TOI-1266b and C have similar temperatures and are believed to be of similar densities and are comprised of about half of rocky and metallic material and half water, the researchers suggested. This makes them half as rocky as Earth or Venus, but much more rocky than Neptune or Uranus. Their host star, TOI-1266, is a red dwarf. Red dwarfs are the smallest and coolest kind of star, which the researchers note could allow for liquid water to exist even on planets that orbit quite close to them. The outer planet has a temperature similar to that of Venus, even though it is seven times closer to its star than Venus is to our Sun. The researchers were led by scientists from the University of Bern and the University of Geneva and used the St. X Observatory at the National Astronomical Observatory of Mexico. A press release on the discovery from the University of Bern mentions that the scientists completed their observations shortly before the COVID-19-related lockdown in Mexico. The St. X Observatory remains closed, although scientists hope to resume operations in the next few months. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.